Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm good, man. So it's good to see you. It's been a, it's been well, probably a year and a half or so since you've been on. But you right. last time you were on, you were with your brother Christian. I was, I was with my brother. Yeah, I'm not his brother. He's my. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I tell everybody that right away. Dude. Let's get this straight. So yeah, man. So uh, what's been going on? What's new in your world? Uh, you know, um, family's doing awesome, doing great. We're always out fighting crime, doing something, yeah. RVing. Um, Training, competing, all that good stuff. Uh, business is doing outstanding. Uh, we're growing. Trying to see what else. Um, just trying to trying to be the older I get. I want I want to be more basic and more simple. Yeah, you know, more more refined. So trying to cut things out of my life I don't need. Bad food and bad people. So <laughs> other than that, though, man, just being blessed. Well, so it, it's been quite a while. And to catch people up who may not know, we've known each other now for probably like ten. 12 years, something like that. It's oh, been a yeah. while um, since you started. You're, you have a bit in martial arts, but you started that in the back of the, the fight gym that I used to train at. And at that point, you had like two or three students, I believe. We did. Yeah. In the back. No AC. Probably like, what year was that? Like 07, 08? No, that would have been, been 2010. 2009, 2010. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Yeah. I knew it was in that time frame. But what I was like, I've been wanting to have you back on anyway since we hadn't, we hang out and I haven't had a like a one on one conversation with you on here. But Ben and I were doing the uh, tequila talk, and we were in it pretty deep, you know, drinking a little bit, talking talking all our nonsense. And uh, we started talking about – he brought up the bullying thing. And he's like, you need a marshal to talk about this. And I was like, yeah, you're right, I do. So that's kind of like what what sparked this, even though I wanted to have you back on anyways to talk about right. all the things. But right. you're in the new momentum of uh, starting another program in your school. We all are growing, right. busy. And you, I know you've been amped up, so I just want to get into it, man. So – We've noticed a, a, a trend here lately with the schools and with people in general, workplace. Um, Bullying is a big thing. It always has been. It's always been there. Um, but it just seems like last year or so, it's really caught on. And it's not a good thing at all. Yeah. And so i um, been getting a lot of phone calls from parents. Uh, they're scared. Like, I've, I'm... I'm, I'm going to send my kid to school, and he's going to come back with this. Instead of good things, it's bad things. And so what do we do? Like, how, how can I be proactive with that? And so I take enough of those phone calls every day. It, 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 you, you know, you hear that, and you start getting more and more concerned. And that's, that's what's going on right now. And so um, I've really refined the way I teach uh, both to children and to adults. Because believe it or not, I mean – 30 years ago, I, I was having one or two every once in a while grown people come in and say, hey, I got this workplace environment. I got this person in my workplace, and they're driving me crazy. And I, I go down to the warehouse, and, and, I, and, I, and you know, I'm being tripped or punched or pushed or, or whatever. Now I get that probably, probably three or four times a month. Yeah. And for a grown man, grown people in the South, that's not something that you just readily walk up and admit to somebody. Well, I didn't know that was a thing. You know, I, I mean, I, I would, I feel like, like mental, mental abuse would be there, but physical, like as an adult, I didn't just didn't know it would be a thing. Oh, like, yeah. That's crazy, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, it's, it's is absolutely. It, do you think it's because, um, why do you think that is? Like, do you think it's the individual, like self confidence thing? What do you think it is? Well, like, cause you've been doing this a while now. So, like, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, how much time do we have? Uh, plenty. Uh, okay. A lot. We have a lot of time. So, I, I've really and truly, um, sat back and thought to myself, what is, what's going on? And, and, and why is that happening? And it's because it's being taught. It's acceptable and it's being taught. Well, who's okay. teaching it, right? Right. And so if you look at the way I do things, I've been, I'm sitting here for like, I don't know, the past 24 hours, figuring out how I was going to answer that question. And that is, I try to dissect everything I do into three letters. CCR, not the band, <laughs> but CCR, right? Coaching, competition, and rest. Okay. My faith is one thing. It's over here, and it oversees everything. My family is another right underneath that, and it oversees everything. But then everything else in my life has to be divided into those three letters. So if you, if you, if you look at things like that and you go, okay, well, why are people treating other people like they wouldn't want to be treated? Yeah. Right? It's because it's being taught. It's being taught at an early age. I don't know what your history is. We haven't really talked about that, but personally I can tell you, that when I would go to school, and um, I'd be junior high, high school, uh, I would go to school, and I would be in really one of two modes. I would be in the mode of, I just got bullied at the house. I, I, I come, my brother and I come from a broken home. Uh, we had an individual, I won't say, but an individual that was very abusive, not physically, but mentally. And it was drug and alcohol induced. 
And so I would go to school and I would be just leaving that environment. Right. And I would see that and I would go to school and I'd be either pissed off, just off at the world. Like the first person says anything to me, I just want to punch him in the face. Yeah. Right? A little bitty dude. It just never worked out. But, or I just want to be left alone. And so I think what's going on is from an early age, people are seeing that, they're learning that, and they're growing up with that. And so they go to school and they react to their environment that they left. Yeah. And they take it out on your child, on my child. Right. And so that kind of, that gets carried into the workplace. And you, you learn an environment, you don't, or you learn that you learn that behavior. You don't stop that behavior. You don't understand that behavior. You just, re- you just react to that behavior. And you, you spend your whole life doing that. And then guess what? You raise kids that do that too. Yeah. So it's just like an ongoing thing. It's a never It starts cycle. from one generation to the next. And I mean, I guess every, everyone knows that, that cliche person that's like, okay, this person definitely has a broken home. They have problems at home. Mm-hmm. And they bring it to school and they pick on people. And it was always like that, you know, you, there was always that bully you know always. no matter who all, everyone all, always knows one yeah, yeah, yeah. but now they're like there's different i feel like there's different layers to that right like then they're used like there was this like that staple bully that guy you yeah know, that, staple, one or that girl yeah you know Absolutely. um because it, it happens in the girls too it's just a different form but it definitely does happen we know that right. too um and then man i don't know it just i i feel like everyone knows that cliche thing but i, I think there's so much more bes- behind the scenes that you would probably see that's just not that one there's not that just that one guy. There's a yeah. lot of it. Like maybe it's not happening in front of a crowd of people. Right. Maybe it's behind closed doors and Absolutely. they do it when no one else is around. Absolutely. And no one knows it's happening. Absolutely. hundred percent. Okay. Well, like my question is what I'm thinking to myself too is like, so how does it, how does it, how does it go into the workplace? Like as far as physically, so what are some stories there you've had uh, like, like for, of grown people? Okay. So thing? this one individual, well, I won't, I won't right, say of course, you know, one individual, uh, he, he was management and he was lower management, but he was working in a warehouse situation. Mm-hmm. And every time he would go down to the warehouse to check what was leaving or coming in or make whatever, his clipboard was broke. Okay. Okay. Then it went from his clipboard being broke to stuff being put in his coffee. Okay. Then stuff from his coffee to the forklift truck, ac- forklift truck accidentally nudging him. And every time he was down there and this was going on, the same guy was around. Okay. Well, then it was, I'm going to stand up for myself. So he would, well, I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. I, yeah. This guy's crazy. And so then, then you go into the environment of, okay, well, finally, as a, grown, as a grown man, you want to tell another grown man or, you know, a grown person, just punch him in the face. Well, you can't do that at a workplace. Yeah. And they know that. So there's that line. So then it, then it leads to, okay, now I know where the cameras are at. Now I know when you go to the bathroom. Now I'm going to meet you in the bathroom where there's no cameras. I'm going to bust you up. And I don't know what he's talking about. He's crazy. And so that's a true story. And that's happened recently. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And so with all this technology, that's the other thing. We have the whole world in the back of our pockets, right? Yeah, right. Right. And so kids grow up being, um, I mean, I'm 47. You're not there yet, but you're getting there. Uh, When I was growing up, if I had a problem with a bully, because I was bullied. I mean, I was a little. I was too at a younger age. Yeah. I mean, I was a little bitty dude. Uh, I was I was a type one. I just been diagnosed type one diabetic. I was in the eighth. Uh, first started the eighth grade. I mean, I may have weighed ninety pounds. You know what I'm saying? Little little bitty guy, and uh, I just was I just was mad at at the world. Like I said, and people found oh well, I'm just gonna go. I can I'm I'm gonna mess with him. Yeah. And so, but when I went home, I could turn it off. Right. I could go in my room. I could get pissed off. I could put up. I could play my music. I could do whatever I want to do to get away from that. Kids don't do that nowadays. Well. You say, why? Well, because they're on their phone or they're on an iPad or they're on, they get texts or I have a situation going on right now where a parent has called me and said, the bullies go to their school. I work at the school. They don't care. They follow my child around to church, to other functions. They, they're from, a, they're from a small town and it's affecting my child. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He doesn't want to play sports. Doesn't doesn't do all the things he wanted to do, and it shuts off automatically. What he's he's being bullied nonstop by a group of kids. Mm-hmm. And it just happened like that. Just one day, there's blood in the water. Pow! Let's go get this kid. And here's the thing. I was talking to another instructor, uh, you know, a friend of mine, and he said it the best. It's kind of like a jailhouse mentality. I'm going to see this behavior going on, and instead of stepping in and helping saying, don't do that, and that's, you know, whatever. You don't want to be picked on. You want to look like a cool kid, too. 
So you kind of go in behind the bully, and then now, now there's a crowd of bullies. Are you saying, like, the one that doesn't want to intervene, like the adult? The adult or child. Okay. Instead of, gotcha, instead of gotcha. taking instead, that yeah, stand. Instead, yeah. Well, most people don't want to because it's going to be like, okay, well, everyone's going to make fun of me for yeah. taking up for this person yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, or, and you know, life's not a movie. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you're not gonna, no, it isn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to whip four or five people's ass. I'm sorry. No, you know, you could, I know okay. I'm going to probably say a lot worse than that. So. <laughs> you, you, you know, you're not going to beat up two or three, four or five people. Um, you're not, you're just going to get whatever, whatever the crowd wants, you're going to get. And if you don't have some kind of specialized high, high, high level training yeah. where you're in shape and you can take up ass whipping for that long, um, that's what's going to happen to you. And other people see that, whether it be mental abuse or physical abuse, and they just get right in line. And they're like, okay, instead of getting picked on, I'll just do some picking to go along so I don't get it turned on me. Mm-hmm. And that's the jailhouse mentality. And that's how that's how you get it. It's acceptable at the, at the workplace because it's always been acceptable at the schools. And look, I'm not trying to bash the school system. I used to work for the school system. I have clients of mine are in the school system, family members in the school system. I love the school system, but their hands are tied. I yeah. mean, what, what are they going to do? They can't do much. Well, yeah. and here, and there's always another question. So, like, my son asked me that. He's like, well, I said, well, look, if someone – do not hit or touch anyone. Yeah. Don't push them on – don't do nothing where you think you can get in trouble. Like, don't do that. Yeah. If someone comes and does something to you yeah. physically, then turn around and punch them in the face. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I told him. He's like, but I'm going to get in trouble. I said, I don't care. Yeah, but here's that's therein lies another thing. A lot of kids won't defend themselves because they're afraid to get in trouble. Yes, even yes. though they may know how to, you know. Yes, well, and they're um, they're told too from right. the school system, we're going to take from you what you've earned. We're going to take your your free time. We're going if you're if you're in the later grades, this may affect your scholarship. This may affect all that. Yeah, stuff. I mean, look, and it's not. You know, I'm not provoking violence here, right? No. And some people are like, oh, you shouldn't look. I, I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. My thing is, if someone fucks with you, then you've got to do something back because it's going to yeah. continue to happen. Yes. Now, do you have to? I mean, I think jujitsu is a great art too. Maybe you don't punch them. Maybe you just subdue them and hold them there and say, hey, look, I can do this. Do you want Absolutely. me to do more? Absolutely. You know? <laughs> this yeah, is I, just the beginning of yeah, this. I can let you breathe if I want to. Right. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, and I and I, I totally see that, and that's why it kind of goes full circle. That's why I'm passionate about what I do, because I see this on a daily basis, and I understand I'm on the front lines. I see this every day. Some people may or may not. You may not hear this from your child. You may not hear this from family members, but I'm hearing this from children every day. When I have a seventh, when I have a seventh grader come in and say, "Okay, what do I do when somebody has has I'm trying to use the restroom? Somebody walks up and grabs me from behind and." bashes my head into the wall yeah what do i do yeah dude that's over and over again every day dude that's not something that i was dealing with in school and when i was in school you fought that's what you did you fought and whoever won sometimes you became good friends right right no that happened a lot yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. well here's my thing do you think it's because do you think it's worse now because they know nothing's going to happen to them yes well yeah so here's the thing so when i was in the school system i was i was told we were kind of coached that uh, you see two kids fighting, you let the SR officer, he writes it up, pretty much both of them are going to go to jail. Yeah. That's, so, that's how it happened. We were, when we got to high school age, that's what they told us. Yeah, we were like, hey, you're both going to get you're locked both up. Going, you're both going, which was technically not, really, was, not really jail, but you're going with the SRO uh, officer. Yeah, yeah, I mean. yeah. So, well, some kids who are already getting, so think about this. You're a 110-pound you're a, a, a ninth grader. Yeah. Okay? You've never had a girlfriend. Yeah, you, you you getting your ass kicked every day. School's hard enough. You're probably getting it at home too. Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, it's a very difficult time. And okay, so I'm finally there. I'm finally going to ball my f- fist up. I'm 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 finally going to fight back. Yeah. And you get cuffed. Yeah. Right. You're scared of it like shit. I'm supposed to be in a safe place in school, safe place at home, and now I'm going to go to jail. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. And then the social ramifications of that. You're uncool because you got your ass whipped. Right. I mean, you and I come from a fighting, you know, you know, background. Getting your ass whipped is just something that happens. Right now, but yeah. at a younger age, no. That's, right, that's your street cred. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like sixth grade, I was fat, overweight. Uh, not, I won't blame it on genetics or anything. I ate like shit. Yeah, I didn't know any better. We had access to shitty food. Yeah, we weren't, we didn't have very much money, so a lot of times the shittier food was the cheaper food, whatever, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and I was overweight and I was in band, that didn't fucking help, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I'm sitting over here with the band nerds, looking at this, what it is, I don't care. What'd you play? I was, 
Saxophone. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. alto saxophone. But anyways, yeah. so did that Never up until that. I did that up until like eighth grade, and then I realized, okay, this is not cool anymore. And also, I'm not passionate about it, right? Not so much the fact that it's cool, but I was trying to play football and band. You know, yeah, I was doing yeah. all of it. Trying, I was actually doing all of it. Play football and I did band. Right on. But um, like, I remember getting picked on by some kid. I don't remember what it was. And at the time, I really didn't know how to fight. He picked. A, okay, this is what happened. He picked on me in front of everyone. Which yeah. that happens a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't want to at the time I was just kinda of shocked, didn't know what to do, and I kinda of left it alone. He'd just like come up and like hit you on the back of the head or like flip the um like mess with my throw my equipment around or my backpack or something, you know, yep. where I'm sitting over here with the kids at recess. Well, I waited till gym class. He was in gym class with me and I just in gym class was in the locker rooms and yeah. I don't remember how it went down, but I roughed him up a little bit. I don't remember what exactly happened, but then he ran and told on me, and then we both got in trouble. And I was like, look, man, this dude's been messing with me for weeks now. I finally got his ass back, but, you know, it is what it is. And then right. it kind of just transitioned to there. We really didn't nobody mess with me anymore, I of guess, because they knew that happened. You know, it's like, okay, don't mess with this dude because he's going to fight back, you know. Right. Um, It wasn't like I knew anything or didn't know any specialized – no, no tactics or no right. how to kick no one in the head or you just tired of it. Yeah. I just had enough. Yeah. Like, and I just, I'm, you know, like, I feel like everyone needs to, to somehow defend themselves, whether it's verbally, physically, whatever needs to happen. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Because I think that I think, well, and this is a question for you too, because you are in this every single day. I think the biggest issue is most of these people don't have someone in their corner mm-hmm. or they don't think they do. Mm-hmm. And so it, Lowers their self confidence, yes. which affects the way they act. Yes, like towards something. Like as far it affects the way they retaliate, right? Yes, and I think that's a huge issue. I think they don't think that someone's in their corner. They don't think someone's going to support them if they do do this, or they just may walk into their scenario every single day with the invitation of "come fuck with me," right? Yeah. Because yeah. they look like a weak individual who doesn't have that. Absolutely. So that's something that I and I've just been racking my brain of. I think you, everybody thinks about scenarios and different things. I'm just like, why is this? Like, and here's another thing. Like, some people say, well, like, okay, I don't think someone needs to go to, and this is something you probably hear a lot too. I don't think someone needs to go to martial arts. They, they don't really teach anybody how to fight. I think it's just a bunch of weird kids there. You know, whatever. You Every hear this. Day. You hear this. Every day. So, like, what's your question to that? What have you seen? Okay, so that's a – man, I love that. I could go on all day about this. So here, here's, here's two parents that I see. Okay, because you know, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old, four, you know, fourteen-year-old, it's not going to bring themselves in, right? So they got to bring a parent in. Most of the time, used to be the parents would say they need discipline. These kids are wild; they need discipline. Okay? Right, that but went on for what, years. Why did they? Okay, do you think? Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. Like they need discipline. Why did they think this is going to be disciplinary? Oh well, we're going to go because that's like that's yeah. another great question. Right. A million-dollar question. Right. If so, this goes back to what I was telling you about faith, family. Mm-hmm. I, I did, and I, was, I don't mean, mean to be long-winded, but I did something. I did things as a parent that I knew were going to benefit my children later on in life. Right. Okay. I pulled them out of school. Um, I made sure that we did something as a family all the time. I yeah. made sure to, as my wife, as my wife would say, got in my son's ass when I had to. Yeah. Right. I made sure to be that disciplinarian because I knew that later on in life, my kids were going to grow up and they were going to have to call upon uh, their foundation to help people later on. Yeah. And so when, when my son started to, my, when my daughter started to struggle, we didn't say, well, we're going to quit this because it's hard. No, my daughter, people don't know this, but my daughter now is a fourth degree. She wants to do international competition. She's been in the ring, all this good stuff. She wanted to quit a blue belt. She wanted to quit a year in. My son wanted to quit a year in, and my wife all wanted to quit a year in. A year in a training. Yeah. Sat him down. I said, why? Because it's hard. I don't do this no more. It's hard. You're, you're an asshole. It's hard. Okay. Well, everything's going to be hard. We don't have a choice. This is our family business. You're not quitting. Yeah. Okay. So when things got hard, they stayed with it. What I see is too many times parents don't discipline children at home. They don't want to do the easy thing. Like you were Bring saying earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring them in. Yeah, yeah. I know what I do. I'll take them to a martial arts instructor. Yeah, and, and then he'll, they'll solve all my problems. And he'll solve my problems in two hours, what I should have been doing for eight years. Yeah. And so now we've always done the easy thing. We've always eaten the easy foods. We're always doing this. Yeah. We always give our kids what they want, not what they need. And now things start getting tough at the martial arts school, and there's always a split. Number one, the kid starts getting better. He starts getting more confident. He starts walking with that... Um, 
I'm not just I'm not just a kid anymore. I'm a certain rank, or I'm a I'm respected in this place. Okay, now that we've gotten all that stuff, parent says now it's time to go play baseball. Which I love baseball, or I yeah. love football, yeah. I love sports. Yeah. And there's another point there, but or or we have a parent that says, uh, you know what, we're exposing stuff here. Or he's talking about that instructor is talking about courtesy, integrity, and perseverance, and self control, and indomitable spirit. And those are things I don't have as a parent. Yeah. So I got to get out of this environment because I'm looking like an asshole. Got you. And that's a rule we have. Don't be an asshole. Yeah. So going back to that, though, and I, I want to say this for, for everybody listening and, and, and for you, the only thing now that gets my dander up is when you pick on a child, you pick on somebody that, that, that you know um, can't, can't or won't defend themselves. Right. Okay. Most of the time it's won't. Yeah, won't. A lot of times it, they, you can. It's just a won't. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that gets my dander up is when we have a situation where um, I get asked this all the time. Well, it's a great sport. L- listen, what I do is not a not not a dang not a damn sport. Yeah. What I do is a what is what's called a life skill. If your child, if you if you pick your eight year old up, throw your eight year old in the pool, and they, and they can't swim, who saves them? Right. Right. If they know how to swim, every time they swim. Then swimming lessons save their life. Yeah. Okay. From now on. Now you can turn that into a sport. Who can swim faster or whatever. Right. But as a martial artist, what I do with your child and what I do for you as a parent is I instill a life skill in them that eventually, especially if you're female, eventually one day will save your life. Yeah. So I don't do sports. Yes, we turn it into a sport because competition is one of my three letters, right? Right. Well, we ain't no damn sport. No, I mean... you that's another thing that gets misconstrued and you have this so so martial arts is a lot more i feel like so in the 80s it was really really there was the karate kid came out oh, it yeah. was like a huge thing everyone yeah. wanted to do it wanted to do it for for you know clout not necessarily to actually compete or do anything or, or it didn't have that as much meaning it was more popularity right were you were you were you a daniel son or were you a johnny Man, I, I never really got into either one of them. Like, okay. I guess I rooted for. I always root for Johnny, man. Well, I mean, yeah, I root, Johnny no, I'm mean, not the Johnny. Daniel, Daniel, well, the, the one who's getting bullied. Daniel, Daniel's son. Yeah. yeah, I was always rooting for him. Daniel gets the girl though, and that's what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I re- but I was like, I mean, I guess I was born in '89, so I was already past like that when that movie came out. '84. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you know, so it was kind of a classic when I was on. '89, <laughs> DJ. Come on, a, man. Yeah, it was a ten year old. Okay. It was a ten year old movie. By the time I watched it, but like. Um, yeah, so my thing is I always root for the little guy. I feel like I always try to help the little guy out because um, I have been a little guy. Of you know, at some point in my life, we all have. Of course. Um, but I've talked about this, too, with other people, especially fight guys. It's like I walked into the gym because I thought fighting was cool because I was doing it a lot, and I was doing it a lot not in the ring. <laughs> um, right, of That's course. Right. So like, And I thought it was cool. I only thought it was cool because – I grew up with the my dad and his brothers. They were the tough guys. They, yeah. you know, so like you would hear that, and you're like, okay, well, I have to at least live up to their yeah. their legacy of what they did in high school, which th- what didn't make a shit or like leading up then. So right. like in high school, we'd be, you know that that would happen, and after high school, going to bars, so that would happen. Not that I was trying to, but I'll tell you this: I was always looking. Yeah, but I was never starting. Like, yeah. but I was always like, okay, there's an opportunity, yeah. which is fucked up. Yeah, that kind of slowly started going away as I started to train. So I had the capability of doing it, and I was doing it. And I wasn't on the bully side, but I was on the side where I thought it was cool. Yeah, and then I realized that okay, this is even though these people are being assholes, is hurting someone. Now I'm starting to respect it more because there's that guy over there that can take my head off. That's right. And also, I know what my capabilities are now because I'm steadily learning new tactics versus the guy who's just swinging a haymaker in the, you know, in the bar. That's right. And so somewhere in there, I'm at the point now where I don't want to fight anyone. Like, if I have to, if I have to, at that point, this is a last resort. Yes. But I will. Yeah. I will. And know that it, if it happens, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's like you're not going to talk about it, but I don't want to have to. Yeah. Um, totally. Totally. <clears throat> And I feel like that happens. I feel like that happens. Not, you know, I, if I started training with the, at a young age, I would have a lot more discipline. You yeah. know, and I think it is important that these kids are doing something for discipline. Right. Whether it's you know training in martial arts and taekwondo, like what you're doing, whether it's doing jujitsu, whether it's doing something, anything like even strength training. I don't know, just something that gives them some sort, for, yeah. some sort of like form of discipline. Throwing a kid into a baseball field is not. I don't think is the best option all the time, yeah. especially if, if it's you're that damn 
fat ass dad who never made it in you know sports. So you want to you want to push that on your kid, and they right. don't really like it. Or you're the mom that, makes, that thinks they have to do it because her friends' kids are doing it. Right. I think that happens a lot. I think ninety percent of those kids out there that are doing the baseball or the football or soccer are doing it because of the wrong reasons. Right. Um, we put our kids in your school for a little while. Yeah. Um, because honestly, I did, they weren't doing anything. I was like, you need to be active some way. That's right. So we'll try this first. They liked it for a little while, but then they will say, I want to try something else. Yeah. I'm like, okay. But I immediately saw a difference in uh, one thing that I think is cool that y'all do is that you like get on their ass about making sure the room's clean and stuff. You have to. And she, my daughter come home one day. She's like, I clean my room. I just don't, you know, or we make sure you tell them that my room's clean. I was like, yeah, I have to let them know, you know? So I think that's cool. Like it's, uh, it's accountability early on. Absolutely. Know? Well, so, so how do we instill tools in the kids, right? How do we give kids the, the mental fortitude to win? Well, let's go back. You know, when you were in a ring, sometimes you won, sometimes you didn't, right? I, I lost more than I won. I think okay. I, I quite there at the beginning for sure. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you know what it's like to get your ass whipped. Yeah, of course. Okay, I know what it's like to get my ass right. whipped repeatedly. Like we both do. There's nothing wrong with that. No. I mean, if all we say it all the time at the school, if all you're going to get is an ass whipping, it's okay. Yeah. Right? Now, if somebody starts pulling out a gun and knife, things like that, that's completely different. But if what you're scared of is an ass whipping, you're going to get over that here. Because everybody here gets their ass whipped. That's yeah. the great thing about That's, a gym. Yeah. We all get our asses whipped. Sooner yeah. or later, you, you run into that one guy. You may be the dude, but you run into that one guy that, that, that really, really gets you that day or, or really yeah. submits you that day or, yeah. or whatever. So when we, when we have – that's what I love about martial arts, the martial arts setting, that individual setting. I can't rely on anybody else. And when it's me and I'm at that school and I've got that kid that's in that bathroom that's fixing to take my $200 – um, or my three hundred dollar uh, softball glove because they do that too. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna take it out of your book bag while you're over there using the bathroom. We'll take everything out of your book bag. Yeah, your phone, everything else. And you say, no, I'm not. That's not happening today. You, you, if you're trained, if you're training, you know what it's like to be on that mat by yourself and get your ass whipped. So, so if what you're gonna give me is an ass whipping for me standing up for myself, partner, I have that happen to me every week. Right. I'm not scared of that anymore. Right. Now that kid starts fighting back, and the next thing you see is you see a transformation of the child into I can take care of myself. And as a parent, when that child finally tells you that story, you can sit back and go, I was justified. Maybe they wanted to stay home and play with their 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 friends that afternoon or, or whatever, but I took them to training instead. Now I'm justified. Now he's yeah. fought back. Now he's got he's got respect. Yeah. And I and I hate to say this, you can put all the feel good things all you want up on on a wall of a school or of a workplace where we don't allow this and we don't allow that. The minute you say it, something's not allowed, it becomes twice as, of course. Twice as much. Someone right? wants to do it. Yeah, all yeah. the time. Well, now I'm breaking the rules just yeah. fine. Okay? And, 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 and the minute you tell somebody it's wrong to defend themselves, you're, you're, you're harboring or you're allowing, you're growing that culture of, well, now I'll go pick on whoever you want because nobody's going to fight back. Yeah. So um, – yeah, I can get long winded about this, but but I, I'm very I'm very passionate about this because I see kids come in all the time with marks, and I see kids all the time come in uh, with that look on their face like they lost something valuable. And you ask them, "Hey, what happened? Well, I, I got something stolen in my book bag today." Well, 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 I know who it is. Well, we, well, okay, did you tell everybody? Well, they didn't believe me. Well, nobody believed me. Well, nobody believes me. What do you mean nobody? Nobody believes. Me. Well, mom believes me, but they think mom's crazy when she goes up there and complains. And and there's no proof of it anywhere because it was done in the bathroom. Hey, guess what? Guess what, parents? You can put as many cameras as you want to. Unless you got a camera on every stall, in every bathroom, in the country of a school, that is where the bullying's taking place. The kids yeah, ain't stupid. And you can't put cameras in no. the bathrooms, right? But kids aren't like, stupid. Yeah, they're going to know. I mean, they know where they need it. I mean, it's like a – um, it's one of those things where you have you have a predator and prey situation, correct? Mm-hmm. Right, and the and the predator knows where to get the prey. Yeah. Like, because we all are predators. We are as a human. Like, we're yeah. not a duck. The, no. Our our eyes are on the front of our head, not on the side. Right. Absolutely. So we're always, you know, like it's one of those things where we are, we know, primarily what we're, you know, where yeah. that prey is. Whether it's there, you know, when you want to harbor some kind of emotional violence or physical violence, if we want something. We figure out where to go get it at. Absolutely. You know, and, and unfortunately, that person that's been raised as the prey, it's unfortunate for them, and we just have to figure out a way to convert them back to a predator, right? It is very unfortunate. Because we are, you know, at, at the state of human, hum, you know, as a human, we are a predator. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? We consume, and there's no other. I mean, what else? We're never running from anything. No. There's nothing else out to get us except ourselves. Yeah, Yeah, we're top of the food chain. So it's like anything under us, we can destroy, kill, you know, eat, you know, consume. And so when you get that many people in society battling against each other, some people are, you know, on the tire on the food chain than the other as far as I had a great conversation the other day that's a, that's a great point too I had a conversation the other day with a with a, well, another day several months back with a, a dad uh, lifted truck um, told me he was you know concealed carry and he was you know pro second amendment and he carried knives oh, and yeah, all that. he had, he had, he had all been that. in the military yeah. Yeah, yeah and I don't believe in taking my kid up to wear pajamas they had this conversation outside right in front of the gun store. I don't believe my... Oh, so y'all were yeah. talking over yeah. there. Not This is not a someone no. who's... Okay, got you. And so he's telling me, asking me about what we do. What do y'all do over there? And I said, well, we, we, we train martial arts. What kind of martial arts train? I train, and I tell people all the time, I train to, we train in traditional Taekwondo, not karate for kids. It's not the same. We do elements of Jiu-Jitsu. We do elements of Krav Maga. We do, we do all that great stuff, but we have to, you know... And so I'm telling him, I'm explaining to him what we do. Because I'm wearing my pants and I got a shirt on. I'm going to the gun store to check right, it out, right? right? Guns and ammo, by the way. Anyhow, uh, and so he says, well, I don't believe in that. I got my kid in sports and that's the way it's going to be. And so I looked at his truck and his truck had um, <laughs> truck had all these gun stickers <laughs> over it. And then it was locked and he even hit, hit the button and unlocked it and started it and all this stuff. And I said, well, sir, uh, all due respect, because he's a big old boy, all due respect, uh, you just locked your truck. Well, we, we, well, yeah. I said you got a, a AR-15, you know, sticker on you. I mean, that's a nice truck. I love. I like that sticker. Nice truck. Well, yeah, because I, I said, n- in other words, you believe in security. Yeah. Well, 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 hell yeah, I do. I want to be right. <laughs> and I said, well, if you believe in security so so much, I don't. I'm being disrespectful, sir, but then it, then you need to allow your child to have some security as well. Yeah, because you're not there. You ain't there. Yeah. And so, I'm having to f- more and more now than ever before not only do i train children but i train their parents i train their parents how does that scenario play out and well before i even ask that so like i think it's a we get caught up as adults doing our thing in life and if that problem isn't brought up to us early on sometimes we'll dismiss it right yeah and so i think that just the the lack of communication between parents and children is far more um prevalent now than it was 10 years ago 20 years ago yeah because the kid always has some sort of distraction now you know yeah. whereas you're not getting as well it's a fun, funny thing where it's like kids will always say that they're bored right right, right now they're bored easier but also less yes that's why they get bored so quickly because if they're not being you know have some kind of you know distraction going on yeah. you know then you know or then they immediately get bored real quick, right? Absolutely. And, and so that, that constant stimulus. Yeah. yeah. They're stimulated 24 seven with something. So when they're not, it's that hits quicker. Whereas we'd go find a stick and a rock to entertain us for an hour before we said we were bored. Right. <laughs> right. We've exhausted all <laughs> options. Right, man. We was up. Dad, mom, I'm bored. I've been exhausted when you're all bored, you had to go to work. Shit. We figured <laughs> yeah. out, you know, it's like, don't tell me you're bored. Cause I'm cleaning the house. Today. I'll get your ass in here. Make you do it. You know what I mean? I'm not bored. I'm not we're bored. like, it don't work that way. Now it's like, here, here's a device, put it in their hands. That takes away their attention until the time of where they're, they're not having that thing yeah. in their hand or something in real life scenarios are happening. Yes. You know, I didn't mean to go on a tangent there. What no. were we talking about before that? Well, Shit. so we, 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 were, we were talking about the, the, you know, the conversation that, Oh yeah. Yeah. You, okay, here, here, here we go. So what does that scenario look like when a adult walks in the gym? First off, it's got to take a lot, lot more um, courage to do that. Right. Right. Because, and, and also like, that feeling of shame and all that, you know, that yeah. that's something they're going to walk in with. I would say nine times out of ten. If I'm just putting a, you know, a scenario in my head of an adult walking into a gym. Absolutely. You know, I did it. I thought it was cool when I walked in the gym the first time. I wanted to fight, but also was like, okay, I don't know anything about this shit. I just want to walk in. But yeah. it took me passing by that gym a month or two months before I had the courage to walk in because I knew when I was walking into. Right. I knew it was a lot of people. I thought I was a badass. No, I wasn't. I knew right. I was walking into a gym of badasses. But, um, yeah, what is it? What does that scenario look like? So, yes, to all that, yes, they're, they've got to – an adult comes in for a reason. A, a, a child comes in because – Adult brought them there. Of like, the they, don't have to have, they don't have to take the – Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of times when the adult brings the child in and says, I need, they need discipline or they're – I look at the – you know, I look at the adult. And I yeah. Say, well, I see why they're not disciplined. Right. right. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I, the apple never falls far, 
falls far fall falls far from the tree. If right. I can say that twice. So um, with an adult, though, it's I have to give you a reason. You have to have a reason to come in, and I have to give you a reason to stay. You have to see. It's got to make sense. It's got to be logical, and 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 that's why you see a trend in martial arts nowadays, where more and more of my friends that own schools don't train adults. There's not an adult in the school. Why is that? Money. Money. They just know like I'm not sitting inside this block of time because I'm not going to get enough people in there to make any money. Right. Yeah. Okay. A lot of a lot of young people don't train uh, because they they just simply can't afford it. What yeah. I'll tell them is if you're in college or or whatever, I'll make it work for you. But we at my school at at where we train at, we have about 50-50 kids and adults, okay? And it's got to be logical. It's got to make sense for them. I can't, I can't talk to an adult, a 40-year-old man, about cleaning his room. Right. He don't care about shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I've got to talk to an adult man about, well, this is how you're going to get fit. This is how you're going to stay alive. And this is how you're going to continue to not have arthritis. This is how you're going to be more limber. And this is how... Uh, and 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 you can carry a gun all you want, but when the bullets stop firing, or the or the or the gun won't work, or or, or you can't find it, or whatever, you gotta have something to back up that you know you know back that up with. Yeah. So so let me give you a logical reason of why you stay. And what I found a lot of times with that is, if it is a parent of a child that is training. There is a, a bond that forms there. Ah, so they see that it happened, the change happened in the yes. ch- child, and they want the change to happen for them because yes. there can, is because they're similar. Yes, makes sense. I, I can tell you this: there has never been a greater joy other than my salvation. There has no, never been a greater joy in my life than knowing that my, I, that my kids are competing in something that I used to do a lot. But not only are they there competing, they came from my school, the one we, me and me and my wife, me and me and Melanie coached them in. And now, when I take my kids places, those instructors that I have, they they want to know what I've got going on. They want to see what my kids do. Yeah. And there is there is a huge accomplishment in that because unlike that that dad that maybe played a little bit of ball, but now he wants his son to go on and be be Mister All World and whatever. I was there at the top. I, I know what it was like. Yeah. And. My brother, who you know, you know, we were we were we were there. We, yeah. we know what it's like to be in that ring. We understand what it's like to have somebody continuously punch you in the face and not stop until you give up. We know that. Yeah. And so when you watch your 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 kids go through that and overcome that, that is the best feeling in the world. I was going to ask you next. How does it feel to see them not only like to train them in that and see them grow, but like see them work with children? Oh man, it's awesome because you hear a lot of what you say. Yeah, and what I told them a lot of times, I'll, I'll be walking through the school and I'll hear Madeline or her, I'll hear Aiden say something, and they'll say like, uh, "Okay, the first three rules of any when you're sparring out here, when you just get new, into into sparring and you're having people kick a punch at you live or taking you down or whatever it is, we'll say, okay, there's three rules: keep your hands up, keep your feet moving, and always attack with combinations. Yeah, that is something that that I learned from my instructor in the in the late '80s, early '90s, and now to hear my son say that, yeah. To somebody that's else's cool. kids, that's oh, cool. It's, cool man. <laughs> it's it's almost it om- it almost brings me to tears because because that's stuff that I preach to them for years and years and years and now really are. What do you think is the best scenario? I guess the best is su- success story from an adult walking in to them walking out or just staying in. What would be one of your talk about what keeps them coming back? No, or, no, like what 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 situation they walk in with. Okay, so and what do they leave with? A lot of times, um, adults, and I'm talking about anybody over the age of about. 22, 23 and up, yeah. right? Um, a lot of them are on medication. A lot of, a lot of anxiety, on, yeah, depression, yeah, yeah. anxiety, blood pressure medication. Blood I mean, pressure medication. Oh, so health stuff too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, people in their 20s being on blood pressure medication. What? I don't understand that. What? Yeah. Yes, sir. And so they'll walk in and they'll have these, uh, you know, I can't do this because of my back. And I well, that's what I hate. I hate when a, someone says, like a doctor tells someone something. And then they immediately say, well, I can't train because I have a medical condition. Yeah. Bullshit. If you can fucking move, you can fucking train. I don't give a – look, I will tell everyone right now on this fucking podcast, right. if you can move, you can train. Yeah. You don't yeah. quit just because something hurts. Now, you may have an injury. Yeah. And if you're debilitated, then you still find a way to move with yes. that injury. Yes. Like the real athletes in the world that compete, and you know this, and we know many of them, whether it be CrossFit, MMA, boxing – yeah. Taekwondo, yeah. jujitsu, they don't stop just because something fucking hurts. No. <laughs> you no. know what I mean? And so, like, if you're stopping before you even walk in the door, then yeah, that's a huge issue to overcome. If it starts hurting, so I didn't mean to rant, man. No, no, no. But I just, no that no. shit gets me fired no, up. I wish I could quote that and have it on my wall. Yeah, you know what I'm like, saying? 
But but if you if you hurt something and you're over the injury, yeah, and you stop moving that, it's gonna hurt for the rest of your life. Exactly. Like so, my thing is like I have an issue right now. It's like a tendon issue that's been bothering me. But I'm continuing to work out. I'm just monitoring it and adjusting my workouts accordingly. Absolutely. You don't stop. Absolutely. Right. And you don't not go try to do something just because someone says, "Oh, well, you need to be careful. Don't lift over ten pounds." Well, I literally, you, you can do so much like physically especially what you do you're yeah. not lifting any weights like no. you guys are, it's just movement yeah then lift 9.5 yeah if 10 is your weight then exactly 9.5. exactly yeah so anyways uh, my bad <laughs> no 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 dude, that's, that's great bro can you can you now i need you to come to my class yeah. but, but no man they come in with always this this huge medication list and this huge reason of why i can't do this and i'm like but you're so 90 percent of what we do you're here okay now you're here yeah so just give me six months that's all i ask this much because you can't fix somebody in a week or two or whatever no right six months later Almost to a man, almost to almost to a person, they'll say, "Hey, they'll always point this side. Hey, I'm I'm able to do this stretch better. I'm able to punch a little harder. I'm able to kick a little harder. I can go now, and not get winded so much. But my favorite is I dropped the medication today. Yeah, I'm not on a medication. My I went and I took my blood work. I've had this several hundred times. Uh, I went and took my blood work, and the doctor called me back and said, "I need you to retake that. Your 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 levels." cholesterol, blood pressure, um, insulin, all that. Your levels are way down. What are you doing? Well, I'm training in martial arts twice a week. Whatever you do, and here's the other thing I love about it is I'm dealing with people in there right now. I've got a young man. He's, he is a, he's top notch. Okay. Um, he's nine or 10. And I mean, literally he's going to be the next superstar. Uh, but he's got a hip injury. Mm -hmm. And so they went to the doctor and I know I'm going to paraphrase the parents here, but they said, the doctor said, look, you need to quit. Don't do football right now. Don't do this. Well, okay, but he does martial arts. Don't stop that. Whatever you do, don't stop that. Okay. Because of movement, because of stretching, because yeah. yeah. of... Well, it's just like a PT, basically. It's just it's like, like yeah. PT, bro. Yeah. Except you get to wear cool pajamas and a belt. Yeah. You know? So, um, but anyways, I, I, you know, going back to the bullying thing, I, that, that is something that I'm passionate about. And if we have more adults out there and more kids out there that can defend themselves, and what I, what I mean by that is... I'm, I'm sick and tired of having a, 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 a guy whose shirt's tight in all the wrong places who looks like he hasn't trained, <laughs> he hasn't trained in 25 years and done any kind of yeah. physical therapy whatsoever. Tell me, I don't need that because I got a gun. And I'm, what I'm telling that guy is nine times out of 10, you, do, you, do you know the FBI says that it takes somebody 12 shots before they hit their target under stress? It's funny as I just had Chris Plants on this podcast last week. Okay. We were talking about some stuff, some of these things. Like uh, he was an FBI agent for 19 okay. years. But yeah, I, yeah, I imagine that. That's what I was getting at. So when they when you said that, I'm like, okay, you're overweight. Your reaction time is skewed <laughs> yeah. immensely. Okay, at its best. Um, yes, like if you've never, tra even if you have that gun, do you train with that gun? Yeah. Did you do you deer hunted? You deer hunt once a year. Yeah. You shoot something. You shoot. You go. Okay. So you go. Sh oh, here's the thing. You go shoot a target to sight your rifle in or bow, mind you. Right. You go shoot that target. Maybe you shoot it. You know, three or four times you know, like leading up to the season. Yeah. Then you prominently pick out specific animals you want to shoot. And They're so that, baited, by the yeah, way. right. And so that only happens maybe three or four times out of the season. Yeah. You get a shot. Then you take that shot and you hit that target. Okay. Yeah. What makes you think just because you do that every now and then once a year, you yeah. know, in the season of a year, that you're skilled, you're a skilled marksman, and that you can use this other weapon who's entirely different from that. Um, and you're, the person that you may have to use it on is not standing there wanting you to do it. No. You know, like it, everything changes. Like just because you think that you're, you know, that guy who's, you know, uh, pro Second Amendment, you know, I'm a badass hunter, yeah. you know, like it doesn't matter. You, you need to be trained. You need to train on everything. Yeah, because I tell you what, here's the thing about that too, and I, I tell this people all the time. Uh, you pull that gun and you don't shoot me. You shoot somebody behind me. That's a million dollar bullet. I hope you got. Hope your pockets are deep, Hot Rod. I had a gun pulled on me in a parking lot when I was 16 years old. A deer rifle pointed into my face. My immediate reaction was move it out of the way and hit the guy yeah. in the face. That happened. That was a real life scenario that happened to me. Had that person really wanted to use that gun, I'd be dead right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to. You know. And I didn't have a gun, so what was I going to do? Stand there and get shot? No. Well, yeah. you know. And then what I, what I love talking about. This with you is that you've been in the ring. Once you when you got when you got in the ring, yeah. did, you, did you have an did you have an adrenaline dump? 
Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. So, and I was training for it. Yeah. Imagine what, you, imagine what the drill and dump is if you're not. Yeah. So somebody pulls, you pull a gun on somebody or you're trying to, you're trying to defend your, let's, 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 let's take this back to martial arts. You're trying to defend your family. And the only training you have is lifting Cheetos <laughs> and drinking real Coke. And 12 ounce beer. Yeah. And, or, or, at, yeah, yeah. Okay. 12 ounce beer. That's the most you train. And the, you, the highest your, your, uh, heart rate gets is when, LSU's down two touchdowns. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you about <laughs> pass out, right? So, so you're going to defend yourself against me, and, and we have another saying. And, and I know this is this is I'm, I'm taking other people's sayings and use them as my own. But the bad guy trains for you every day, all day, eight hours a day, partner. Yeah, he is trying or not eight hours. He's training for you twenty four hours a day, but he's really watching out for you in like a set amount of eight hour time, right? Yeah. But he's training for you all day, every day. He wants to take from you what is yours, what God has blessed you with, what you work for. He wants to take it from you, and and. And you're not going to train. Yeah, you're going to be a victim. And you think, yeah, and you think that you you think that just because some grace of whatever it may be that you uh, that you're a badass one yeah. time in your life that you're going to yeah. replicate that in a, a moment of you know absolutely haste. Absolutely, <laughs> no, it's not going to happen that way. I mean, here's the thing: like, there's always someone better than us. There's always someone stronger than us. There's always someone faster than us. Yeah, you just got to be ready. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, I just want to I want to go back and touch on that one more time, and that is. Okay, so what do you do if you think – if you've got a bullying situation at the house? Or, 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 or I'm sorry. Your kid comes home and something changes automatically with him. That's my next question. That's okay. what I wanted to talk about is, yeah, because what should parents be looking for? Because, you know, 99% of the people listening to this, you know, are parents, right? Absolutely. So, like, what should they be looking for? Um, sudden and abrupt changes in behavior. Okay. Like what, what would be an example? Um, like you've got a daughter and she's always wanted to go to dance class. Always. She's, she's, she's constantly, I want to go do this. I want to do this. And then one day I don't want to do that. Okay. Well that, that should make your ears perk up a little bit. Right. If you see a sudden change in clothing, like I want to either, I want to dress with less clothing or I want to dress with way more clothing and I don't want to wear makeup anymore. If you're, a young lady. If you're a dude and you and you're, I don't want to go to church. I don't. Well, you've always wanted to go to church. I don't. No. Okay. Okay. Well, well, what's going on? I will tell you that I'm very close to my mother. I love my mother with all my heart. I really do. She's one of the most awesome people I know. When I was when I was twelve, thirteen, she'd ask me that. I said nothing. I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm not going to talk to her. Everything's fine. Yeah. But I had an instructor in Beanie Broadway. God rest his soul. That. Sometimes it took him whipping my ass, but then he'd ask me, Fulgin, what's wrong? Oh, well, you know, I just had a bad day, and you know, I got into a fight, and he was a friend of mine, and, and I don't know, you know, I think, I think I broke my pinky or I broke my finger or whatever. And, 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 and he would, it was somebody I could confide in because he was always honest with me. And that's the, that's the thing about kids, and you got to be careful as parents. This is why you have, to, you have to have people in your child's life that you know are looking out for them, that you know as a parent are looking out for them. I didn't trust anybody else, so I was going to do it. Yeah. Okay? But ch- children will gravitate towards something. They're, they're, they're an empty cup, and they want to be filled with knowledge, and, they wanna, and they'll go seek out people that they trust. And so if you've got a child that's being bullied, or if you've got a child with sudden changes, mood swings, it could just be their teenager. It just could be. It could be, it could be drug use. It could be something. Yeah. But if it's... If you notice a mark here or there, or they're constantly looking. Or I had a, a, a nine-year-old kid come into the school the other day. He was being bullied something horribly. And that kid walked in, and I counted, and he checked over his shoulder seven separate times. He, like, he was constantly looking over his shoulder when a new kid would come in. And I thought to myself, we, I, I'm, I'm going to help this young man. Yeah, if he can't even feel safe walking in there, yeah. you know, something's really wrong. So if something changes, they don't want to ride the bus anymore, something crazy like that, don't go, to the, don't go and ask the school. Ask your child. And if, and if, and if, you've, if you've built that rapport up, if, if you're a parent who takes time at an early age to build that rapport up, your kids will talk to you. Mm-hmm. If not, get them with somebody that can because here's the thing. Here's the here's the here's what I want to leave everybody with. I'm going to scare you, but here's 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 it. Human life has been devalued so much here lately. Social media, which I which I love and hate, but you know, social media, movies, just just our society in general. The human life has been devalued. And what does that say when a young person at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, a kid thinks that the only way 
to change my life is to end it. Or the only way to really get back at them is to is to control the one thing I can, and that's to take my life. Yeah. That's a whole other issue, man. Bro. That's a whole other issue. That's powerful, man. Well, kids are so malleable, right? And mm-hmm. so, like, if my thing is connecting with ours, finding activities to do together. Yeah. Most people can't sit down and talk to a child or have a conversation. If a child, they don't want to talk to you, sometimes they don't. You know, it is what it is. Right. But create... You know, find an activity to do together, and that'll create connection. Yes, like just organically, it's going to create it. Yes, and then eventually, I mean, that's no matter what it is. Like so many people are like, "Well, I can't go do sports with my kids." We'll find another fucking activity to do. Sit down and draw with them. Yeah, take them somewhere to eat, have conversations. Yeah, um, cook with them. You know, anything anything can be done. Anything's an activity. It doesn't have to be physical. You know, absolutely involve them, involve them in your life. Yeah. Make them feel like, I mean, they're like you said, they're empty cup. They want to be filled. Yeah. If you're not going to do it, someone else will, mm-hmm. you know, and that thing is like, okay, well, hopefully it's the right person, Absolutely. you know, because a lot of times it's not, it's not bro. I know. Um, but yeah. And, and that's how we're going to end that. That's, that's how we're going to, uh, people are always going to be cruel to one another. I, I get that. It's just our way as a human, you know? Well, yeah, let's, know, but, we'll, we'll talk about that. You, People say they hate social media, they hate this, they hate that, you know, and we're, we're being devalued. I agree. Um, but the thing is, we're, it's just humanity. Social, social media is just a funnel. I mean, it's it, just, it's just, I mean, it's literally, there's just more attention on something now. But everything that's happening on that platform, it's not the platform's fault. That's just, it, someone's saying, I hate social media because... It's doing this to, to a, our yeah. society. No, it's not. We are fucking doing that to each other as a person. <laughs> it's just the avenue. It's just the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, totally. We've been doing it this entire fucking time yeah. since, we've, since we were created until we're gone. Yes. There's always been a need to pillage, conquer, control, murder. Yeah. You know, con, you know it, all those things are just traits of humanity. No, no, <laughs> no. Know, it's tra- not a good thing. We're, we have been... We have been I, collectively, as a society, we're better than we were a thousand years ago. Oh, totally. you know what I mean? Oh, yes. And it's, yeah, we're still shitty. I just think that there's less accountability, yeah. and that's the problem. Like on social media, there's less accountability because someone can't reach out and slap the shit out of you and you say something stupid. Oh, no, no. You know? Look, look, when I say I hate social media, I know what I, you were getting at. Yeah. I'm just saying that for people that immediately say that. You know? No, I love social media because it, 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 it has helped me grow my business uh, immensely. Right. Uh, through, you know, your efforts. But, but, um, what I will tell you this is is also true, is that kids and adults both, uh, you know, a thousand years ago when I was training, uh, you, you you had you you had Black Belt magazine or you had a, a blockbuster tape to watch the UFC. Oh hell yeah! Right? If you didn't get it in class, it was Black Belt magazine or that I wore blockbuster out renting that tape. There's probably a lot of people that are still angry at the Bozier blockbuster because I always had it with me, son. <laughs> <laughs> I would rent it, take it back in, rent it again. Okay, so. Uh, but people nowadays can get on their phone and look and see what's real. Yeah. And go, oh, that's bullshit. Look, it's right here. I, I see it right here. What you just told me is bull. So, so I love it in that fact. I, I, I love it that kids can look on there and see, okay, that's not right. That's not real. Adults can do the same thing. So it's our job as martial artists, and, and this, this goes to, out to all of them out there, put down them, them, them crappy, cheesy ways. And get back to what's real. Yeah. Be a real martial artist. Quit being one of these people that is, quit being a kick fillet or a McDojo. McDojo. I love that. I love that Instagram, by the way. <laughs> quit being like that and get back to actually helping people. Quit yeah. giving them stuff all the time. Make them work and hold them accountable. And we are going to, we'll, we'll, we'll write this ship. But if you keep giving an eight year old everything he wants, let him quit whenever he wants to. Never put anything into him but a bunch of trash, Cheetos, you know, stuff on that, whatever he wants to watch on his phone because yeah. you never check it. You keep doing that? What kind of, what kind of person do you think you he's going to be? They, just like an adult. You keep doing it to an adult, it's going to You're going to yeah. implode. It's going to implode. Like, what do you think? Like, feeding us everything we want all the time never yeah. results in – it never results in us being satisfied. It just well, it results in us wanting more – which is always going to be an issue, right? Are you exactly? Are you are you ever able to go somewhere and turn it off? Yeah, I turn it off. Um, well, man, no. Yes and no. Okay. I have different controls, right? So, like, I consume. I had this conversation. Um, I was on a podcast with um, with Michaela from the okay. and I, and I don't know if it's aired yet. What's today? I believe it airs today, actually. Oh, I want to check um, that on out. On the eleventh. Um, I was on a 
thing with her, and she asked me a question. She was, and sorry, I'm going left field here, but it's all going to come back. Okay. So she asked me a question like, "Where do you get your motivation from? What do you listen to?" And I was like, "Well, it's damn sure not any of those fucking Instagram. I mean, those um, YouTube videos with that music in the background with T.D. Jakes yelling at you, or yeah. they, you know, whoever. Um, it's not. That's not where it comes from. My my motivation, inspiration, whatever it may be, comes from conversation. Yeah. And I think that's what's so great is because I was telling my wife this um, a day or two ago. It's like every time I come and sit in this room, I leave with more insight than I came in with. Yeah. Okay. Because I've sit down to talk to someone who's an expert in their field yeah. or someone that you know has different beliefs or different you know views of things, and we discuss it, and then I leave with more information than I walked in with. Right. And I said I think that makes. I look at people differently now than I used to. Growing up in a really small town, a small in this we're in the South too. Yeah. Closed minded individuals. Yeah. The way we grew up, when you look at someone, you look at someone with a sense of um judgment, right? Yeah. Always. Always. Like that's how we were raised. Always. And um it's because they're different. Yep. And um now I seek out someone who's different. Oh, because yeah. my entire mind has changed because I realize that talking to people creates this whole new funnel of this is this person's not the same as me they view things differently than i am but what can i take of that and we were talking about i was like so many people they um they just don't have the the and i I hate saying knowledge because i would say the um oh what i want to i don't want to sit here and, and bash someone they don't have the the mental IQ, like as far as like emotional IQ or whatever it may be that, you know, it's just, it's not there yet because they haven't, they've been, okay. Perfect example. They've only had real conversation with probably 10 to 20 people in their life. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. How many people, right. Think about that. They've only had maybe real meaningful conversation, not so-and-so got her hair did today or so-and-so's a jackass because he likes his football team. Right. Real meaningful conversation. They probably only had that, if they're lucky, 10 to 20 people of their life. Yeah, Because well, they don't have that with. Whereas I'm getting to sit down every single week and talk to someone and have real conversation. It makes your mind expand. Of course. And so it all comes back to like, I just, that 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 drives the, you know, the way that, that, that I'm growing. Yeah. And so uh, all and back to shutting off. I don't think I ever shut off. I just think I have like I think that you um you need some sort of struggle in your life and you mm-hmm. need to test your mind and your body constantly. And if you're not doing that, then you're never going to develop to your full potential. Yeah, you not grow. saying nothing's wrong with you. If you want to sit there and, ha- and ride the easy way the rest of your life, that's fine. But you're never going to be at your full potential because you never tested your body. You never tested your mind. You never got up and did something you didn't want to do. Right. You know? So, like, <laughs> I'm right. always doing something in a sense. Of, okay, so I love listening to, like, podcasts while I'm driving. You yep. do, too. You oh, enjoy yeah, that. We've all talked the time. about that. So I shut it off in the sense that I'm taking in information, but I'm not sitting there trying to make a decision. Right. So I think that's why I shut it off a lot. Well, you, you pretty much read a book every time you do this show. Right. I mean, right. Yeah, you're, you're but it's like, yeah, I need the engagement. I yeah. can't sit down. I will sit down and try to open a, If you give me a book, even if you wrote a book, I've had people give me these books, and I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm not going to read it. If it's on Audible, I may listen to it, but I'm not going to read it. I will fall asleep, man. I will too. I will fall no. asleep. But, 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 but no, imagine, imagine somebody like that. That's a great point you make. Imagine somebody like that who's never, okay, so. So if we have time, a little, a little, yeah. a little bit of history with me is, is I wasn't the best in my school. Yeah, I wasn't the, I wasn't the best martial artist. I wasn't the, the best one that's ever come through. I, I never won. I, I didn't, I didn't go internationally and compete because I just, it, it was just timing was wrong. And if I'd have gotten there, who knows if I'd have even placed whatever. But I'm here. Yeah. Because martial arts has always kicked my ass. Yeah. I'm, I'm not good at it. I'm always struggling. It's, it's funny. When you ask somebody what they do for a living and they tell you and then you go, wow, you know, you, you've done that for 30 years, 30, what, 88 to now, whatever, for 30 plus years, right? You've done martial arts. You've been in martial arts some sort of whatever for 30 plus years. Damn, you must be really good. No, no. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I just know more stuff that I'm horrible at. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're, you're more you're more aware and of what so, you're not good at. But it, my life would have been extremely, look, looking back, extremely boring if I didn't have something to constantly challenge me because I am a lazy person. Yeah, I lack a lot of uh, you know a lot of you know a lot of determination at times. I can be extremely, extremely lazy at times. I just want to go home and turn things off. However. I can't because of what I do. 
And the great thing about the art that I'm in is it doesn't get any easier the higher rank you go. Like you do it for a couple of years, it gets easier. No, this is the only martial art I've ever been around where it gets harder the harder up you – I mean the, the – the farther up you go, it's like the art just keeps going. Well, here's something else for you to do that you that you're horrible at. Here's something else. Oh, here's here's three things. Yeah. Go go suck at that for a while. Yeah. And then if you still want to be around, well then okay, you know, you've been around for ten years now. And 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 so people that that don't do something like that that challenges them physically and mentally. And I'll say this. The mental part's huge because uh I had a neurosurgeon who used to be in Shreveport. 10 years ago, tell me, he said, he asked me what I did. I said, well, I'm a, I'm a martial arts instructor. And he looked, leaned back and he said, oh, you teach martial arts? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you know that I've never had a martial artist that I've treated who's come up with, he, he called it something, but it was, it was basically dementia in their older age. Right. He said, no, I've never had that. And I looked at him and he was a world-renowned neurosurgeon. It's no longer here. You guys, you know, maybe, you know, figure it out or not, whatever. Yeah. But he said, because the martial arts... Teaches, teaches you things through constant and repetitive motion. Yeah. And it hooks your brain and your body up at the same time. And there's a, there's your brain has to constantly be taking in new things and struggling with new things. Because if not, he said, looked at me, he said, Marshall, it's like a muscle. It's the weakest and strongest muscle in the human body. If you don't exercise it, you lose it. And when you lose your mental cognitive abilities, you have dementia, you go crazy. Yeah. And she said, so eat right and always exercise. Never quit that. Well, I'm 47 years old. I've been training since I was 11, 12. And I don't, I don't I've got a broke, I've got a messed up hip, hip. I got bleeding retinas. I got type one diabetes. I've got all this. I'm not flexible. I'm not tall. I'm <laughs> extremely good looking and smart. That, <laughs> but you got that, you got that box check. You got that down. But, um, Go find you something. I think what you said is great. Go find you something that challenges you yeah, and anything, do that. Anything. I think that um, I, you have to move. Yeah. We see it in everyone. We see it. We'll, we'll see it in old couples or old people that they retire and they sit yeah. down and they, they decline. Yeah. That they, we long for, like, we had a society for so long that longs for retirement. I long to sit down and do nothing. That's the worst thing you can long for. Because <laughs> when you sit in that fucking recliner, one day you're not going to be able to get up. Yeah, you waste away. One day you're going to be 500 pounds, you know, and then you can't get out of that recliner anymore. Then that's where you're pissing and shitting it. You yeah, know, like yeah, yeah, it yeah, could go that know. way. It can go that way. But like, or you're going to continue to develop health problems because you're not doing this. I had a conversation with my grandmother. She's now, I believe she's 85 or 86, and uh, she'll she'll outlive us. Uh, she <laughs> the only reason here's the only reason why that she's having problems. I think she's going to have a problems. She has knee issues and she's okay. scared to death to get knee replacement. And she's, uh, she needs to go do some stem cell therapy or something. But yeah. she's beyond that. Her knees are turning in, so she has okay. a hard time walking. And she'll probably – she listens to these. So okay. I, I feel bad if I, I don't want – I don't mean to be, you know, too, too um, blunt well, hey, with Hey, Grandma, her. how you doing? Yeah, how too you blunt doing? with her. But, like, she is in great health. And we had this conversation a long time ago. We talked about it. Um, I, I don't know how if I went on a rant about eating healthy, but I talked about not eating gluten anymore and drinking more water because you, at a younger age, I remember growing up around her and she always had like a glass of tea in her hand oh, yeah. and wasn't consuming enough water. Well, I notice now that she drinks more water and she doesn't eat, you know, as, as much, you know, bad things. And, um, I'd had that conversation with my other grandparents. They are both now passed, but it was too, they're too far gone. They didn't really listen, but I do. I think I remember her saying something about she's drinking more water and feeling better, but I think that she's constantly moving and she's, you know, she's watching what she does now. And I don't think there's, there's not a too late. I think a lot of people getting later in life and they're like, okay, it's too late for me. Yeah. I've been living this way so long. Yeah. And even in your, even in your like sport, oh, yeah. you know, they may like, you have an old, uh, older, uh, lady that she's not old. No, she, she's seasoned. Se- she has, seasoned. You have a seasoned veteran. 72, 72. That's doing things. And Toughest individual I think I've ever been around. There's a lady that works out in our, our CrossFit with us, and I was telling my wife that I looked at my wife yesterday, and I don't know how old she is, but she's older than us. Right. You know, um, and I looked at my wife and said, I hope, you know, at that age that I'm able to do what she's doing, and she's doing all this with us. That's awesome, And she's, bro. you know, at least, you know, I don't know, I hate bringing people's ages up because well, they get mad, upset, but she's she's at least 20 years older than us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at that still, at that age, like, you, most 50-year-olds 50, years old, 50 year olds have heart disease. They Most fifty year olds are on blood pressure medicine. They are. They're they're at risk of stroke every mm-hmm. single step they take because they don't take enough steps. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. No. Like, so I get on the whole tangent about this but, shit. But but, <laughs> but but see that that and that's a great point. That that starts at an early age. If you yeah. tell somebody you know you never do anything, never do anything that makes you struggle. 
or you beat somebody down so much that they don't ever want to struggle, that all they want to do is have it easy from now on because they're their 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 life coming up was horrible. Then they get into school and they get beat on, picked on, whatever. Then if they if, if they never have that moment where they can overcome something, exactly right. Yeah, exactly. And they're well, you well, if you have to you have we you have to get your ass kicked at some point in life. You have to you have to get your ass kicked to to appreciate something more. Yeah, that's the that's one thing. But you also have to get your ass kicked to know how to overcome it. You have to. Yeah, you have there's to not a person in there. There's not a world champion out there that hasn't had their ass kicked. And whether it be in sparring no. behind closed doors, no one said it, anything about it. Whether <laughs> no. they got they got blinded and almost knocked out. There's not a world champion out there that hasn't had their ass kicked. There's not a you know expert in their field who didn't struggle Absolutely. climbing to that to be that expert. <clears throat> and this is cliche shit. And so I, you know it's like one of those things. But people need to hear it in some format. You know whatever right. it may be. Right. No, I, I think that's totally true. And I see a lot of that. I see people that quit before just as they're starting to get good or <clears throat> better, more coordinated, more confident, more blood works good, or yeah. they got more friends at school. Eh, we'll quit. They get there and stop. Yeah. They get there and stop. And then eventually it, it may stay with them for a while, but they're going to lose it. I promise you. Absolutely. They um, I want to quit all the time. I'll be honest. I, I, I'm in the middle of a workout, and I will literally think about quitting. It crosses my mind, and it makes me feel like a pussy when I do. Yeah. I'll think about it. I'm like, no, keep going. Yeah, you know. But I will think about it. So that tells me that it's human nature to want to stop something that's hard. Yes, you sir. know what I mean? Because it's no matter how hard it gets, no matter how good I am at something, there's days where I don't want to do it. Yeah. No, I I I, I totally <clears throat> get that, and I, I that's cool that you said that because. If you've never been to the wall, we, we talk about hitting the wall all the time. If yeah. you're not hitting the wall every time you come in, there, you're, you're the, it's, a, it's the old thing. I think Drew Brees said it. Uh, in, in our environment, we say this all the time, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. There's no in between, right? Yeah. And so uh, if, you're, if you're not hitting that wall on, on, a, on a daily or a semi-weekly basis, if you don't know what that's like, then when it's time, when, you're, when your number's called and it's time, it won't be there for you. Uh, you'll quit. You'll give up, you'll roll over, and that'll be that. What I like about people that don't quit, even though they get their ass kicked, is that they they have that sense of accomplishment. You've pushed that wall. Every time you don't quit, that wall gets pushed a little bit farther back. And you know if it goes down, I'm going to go to the end. Yeah. I'm not going to give up. And you're always still chasing that wall. Always, bro. Cause <laughs> you get, when you when you when you get there and you grab it, let me know what that feels like. Yeah, you're not. You're not because as you get better at something, there's going to be another challenge that you want to overcome. So, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I hate those people that that man. I, I use that word loosely. I don't hate anyone, but I, I can't stand the 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 way people that are on the top or, or that are great at something just refuse to admit that <clears throat> there's no struggle anymore. Oh, shit. Because to be there, it has to be daily struggle. You know what I mean? If if where's the, where's the fun in if it's not? <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I mean, if everything was easy, well, you wouldn't have fun, right? And to be and like to be just like a, a champion fighter or a champion competitor in anything, like you have to constantly be on your toes because you know someone's coming to take it from you one oh, day. Dude. It's just a matter of how long can you keep it. Absolutely. You're going to lose it. You are going to lose it. Absolutely. So like it's just a constant battle of okay, I've achieved this. How long can I keep it? Yeah, and all the work it took to get you there, and I mean, we've all we all sit back and maybe have a couple of beers, and we're talking about. We all have a story, right? Yeah, we all, we all have yeah. that story. Uh, but it's, what's really cool is you can talk to people about your story every once in a while, and and just like you, I'm I'm a, I am a professional visitor. I, yeah. I have I have taken that title from somebody I knew. Right, I'm a professional <laughs> uh, visitor. But I learn, it's like when I talk to people like yourself, I, I read a book every time I do. I learn something new every time. Yeah. And um, I love to hear the struggle because I love knowing that I'm not the only one that's struggling. You know what I mean? With, with that. Yeah. And everyone has, everyone has something too. They're, they're just, just getting them down. Yeah. I don't, even that's another thing. You can be the baddest son of a bitch in the room and mentally, you know, mental fortitude is amazing. But something still gets you something does something bro. still gets you and you always got to fight it man that's right if there's someone i don't know they're not human if it does you know what i mean i just I, I refuse to agree that someone just has all the box checked and that you know there's no issues no no man I, look like i totally get that and last thing i'll say about the whole the whole deal that you know we've been talking about you know first of all i want to say thank you for having me yeah for sure um i don't know if we're ending this or not no but, we'll go but, for a little bit but, longer but yeah but, um this this has been fun this has been cathartic uh 
But man, I've watched you come up, dude. I mean, this is this is awesome. So I walk in here and I got we got these new digs. I'm not used to. This is cool. Yeah, we're still we're still not you know at the pinnacle. I don't think we'll ever be. That's just okay. like anything else we were talking about. But we're definitely uh, we've stepped it up, man. We've uh, I think this is like Josh and I were talking about this the other day. I think this is like number twelve or thirteen in here, maybe like already. I yeah, like the it. Past I like the vibe. Uh, yeah, man. I, I, the guys down here in the East Bank are awesome. Like it just uh, what we're doing. What I did want to bring up those one is. And one more thing, just so people can say they heard it here first. Yeah. I would like to start a rumor, okay? <laughs> a good rumor, but a rumor. I was thinking about the other day. We need to get together and figure out how we can get Ben Cheveria as the next mayor of Ozier. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to start that. Yeah. I'd like to start that rumor here. So when he hears it at Kroger or something one yeah. day, he can go, where the hell did you hear that? Frequency interrupted. But, yeah. Um, so Ben, if you're out there, bro, that was for you. But, uh, <laughs> anyways, no man, I, I I do I do check your podcast out. Um, I do as I'm always driving back and forth. I, I don't put that as in our numbers a lot of times, but yeah, I do check that out. Cool, and thanks. I do, I do learn thanks. a lot. So. Thanks. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I'm, I'm learning every single time, and um, I'm becoming more malleable. I would say, yeah. um, and I think it's I think it's important that everyone does. I think it's important that someone, and that's another thing. Like we, you know, some people will write something off because of a title. They'll read a description of something, especially like listening. If you want to listen about, yeah. you know, I don't think I want to listen to that because what it says in the description doesn't sound appealing to me. But there's been so many times when I listen to something anyways because I still find something in there. Yeah. Oh, you know absolutely. I mean? Yo, absolutely. Well, I'll the, tell you what, one of, one of the things I thought you've been uh, very good about is getting people to listen to different podcasts and then talk to them and say, well, what pod, what podcast do you recommend? Yeah. And I tell you, man, that's really kind of opened me up a lot, too, because I was just only listening to a couple of people for a while. And now I'm, like, trying to go out and find different views and different ways of seeing the same thing. And that, like you said, it, it, it molds you. Yeah, I mean, you it know? constantly it constantly gives you a new perspective. Because new perspective, they're, they're, right? if, you're not taking, if you're not taking time to adjust that perspective, you're, that muscle's not being flexed either, right? That's true. Or worked out or adjusted. That's true. So, like, you're, not, you're just consuming the same thing all the time. Yeah, you're going you're to broke. get you're going to get swayed one way or the other. Just no like just like politics or anything else. If you only sit in here and listen to this one box all the time, right. Then you're eventually going to become radical in that box, right? That's right. You know, Dude, I, I tried. I, I I don't want to stop you on that thought because that's good stuff too. Yeah. But I've been trying since about the first of June, I think, first of the summer, just doing the non political thing. I don't do anything political at Bro, all. If somebody I don't says care. something about political, uh, you I know, don't politics, care. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I just don't care, man. Like, I'm going to live my life best I can and try to help as many people as I can and do what I like to do. Yeah. I feel like that's the best thing we could do out there. It's not the real world. <laughs> no. 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 And so. it's. And at the end of the day, it's like one person doesn't control everything. If you think that, then you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there are puppets pulling strings. Oh there, there's no way one person makes all the decisions in the country or the world or anything. So, like, you, you're just getting you fed into that shit, and you want to – if that's going to stir your pot every day, cool, but it's not stirring mine. No, no, I had a friend of mine tell me, if you, if you uh, are going to blame somebody that lives in a house 2,000 miles away from your home on – why your life is the way it is, you you need to you need to think. And, yeah, you know, there's no accountability so there. Let's just start blaming ourselves yeah. and get better with us. Yep. How about that? That's All where right. it starts. It. Yeah. Who yeah. ended on that note, sir? Right on, man. Well, thanks, DJ. I appreciate yeah. this, bro. Man, I appreciate it. It's good to see you, and we'll do it again more because we we're gonna go over again. I'm sure. Right on. <laughs>